During a decade of war in Afghanistan, an estimated five and a half million refugees have fled the battle-scarred countryside, crossing into Iran and Pakistan. Two-thirds of them settled in temporary encampments here in Pakistan's northwest frontier province. Whole forests have been stripped to provide fuel. Now, with the Soviet troops' withdrawal from Afghanistan, fueling hopes for an end to the war, officials here are preparing to rebuild the province. They're asking for millions of dollars to rebuild villages and towns destroyed in airstrikes and by saboteurs making raids across the border. Roads damaged by the sudden increase in heavy transport have to be reconstructed. Hosting the refugees has cost Pakistan dearly. During the war years, Peshawar, the provincial capital, has become known as a center of international intrigue. But the refugee children gathering plants from the walls surrounding the homes of the wealthy could hardly be classed as spies. Refugee camps virtually encircle the city. This old woman recently trekked out of Afghanistan. She was driven out, she said, by the bombing. Now no one will help her. She sends her grandson to beg in the market. For many refugees, the market is the hub of their lives. International aid has provided for the Afghan community here, but most of these men were farmers, hardworking and prosperous in a small way. They're not prepared to sit and wait for the day of their return to Afghanistan. So they've become traders, setting up stalls in a bid to amass a little capital. The prospect of an end to the war has resulted in a great deal of discussion here about capital and finance. The establishment of refugee villages throughout the province drained financial resources. Rebuilding it when the refugees have gone is expected to cost millions of dollars. But re-establishing the refugees in their homeland is expected to cost billions. A survey conducted inside Afghanistan by a team trained by an aid group, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan, showed that the agricultural infrastructure had been smashed. Villages had been razed and livestock shot by helicopter gunships. New arrivals also bring news. An old man speaks of a recent bombing raid on his home. The Swedish committee also trained a camera crew. They returned with graphic pictures of a village under attack. There'll be little left for the refugees to come home to. There are claims that a scorched earth policy has been enforced here. The survey showed that the worst bombing occurred in 1985, when well over half of Afghanistan's farmers had their villages bombed. Many thousands of landmines were also laid, making the task of repopulating the countryside extremely hazardous. The refugees have also been warned by the Mujahideen freedom fighters not to return until an Islamic government is installed in Kabul. But some families can't wait that long, and Prince Sadruddin Aga Khan, the coordinator of United Nations aid to Afghanistan, wants rehabilitation work to start now. I think if the uh, refugees and the internally displaced are to go back to their places of habitual residence, um, obviously there has to be adequate preparation. It would be uh, disastrous if, for instance, a large number of people went back and they had uh, no food, no, no crops because the land has been lying fallow, no water, um, no medical facilities. So you have to establish certain regions where there can be some confidence building and which can act as, as a magnet to draw people back. And I think we need the advice of the Afghan people themselves. You know, the, the foreign aid community tends to underestimate the ability of people sometimes to cope with their own problems. And I think what's needed are simple things, but they're needed fast. Traders emerging from Afghanistan are dealers in scrap metal, the remains of military hardware destroyed in battle. The UN has already raised $1.3 billion to clear the battlefields and rebuild villages and the agricultural infrastructure to support them. But the prince is calling for more. He wants $3 billion raised, and he wants it raised now. The rebuilding of Afghanistan and this border province of Pakistan would be impossible without international assistance.